I'd uh, wish you all a happy weekend. Just uh, saw awesome news on my uh, video feed. It's notified by YouTube about uh, Inspirational Nomad's latest uh, video. And apparently bought a house. <laughs> Way to go! Not only a house, he, he got a, um, what he got was a, I guess a, um, looks like a RV lot with an RV on it. And it's like got beach access, it's pretty much like on the beach. Let's say on the beach, I guess the, the lot, the area where he is, is right off to have a private beach access. It is like a really nice, nice, nice place. So um, when I finish this video and you know gets uploaded, processed, I'll go ahead and put a link to his video there. But um, you know we've been talking a lot about homelessness and um, trying to get a home base and securing a plan for van dwellers to get in the home. So I'm really happy and excited for him that you know he managed to pull this off. You know, and I guess he spent like five years looking at a van. I myself was in a man for like about six years, you know, and we have different reasons for living in a vehicle. You know, some people do it because it's a fun or a cool thing to do, a bucket list item. Other people do it out of necessity, you know, due to financial reasons or whatever. I think if, if you do it for fun, you, you know, you got probably more resources on uh, available for you for when you don't want to do it but if you're not doing it for fun you really need to try to plan an exit strategy as far as getting out of the van unless you decide you like it and want to stay like that but the truth of the matter is um, anyone who lives in a van full time you know that that isn't doing it because they got lots of money on the side they can just leave whenever they want it's actually a hard life and um, once you get into it, it it can make it a little bit more difficult to get out, but you got into that position because it had gotten so difficult not being in that position, you know, not like living in a regular house or whatever, that you couldn't afford it anymore. So it, it's like a backup plan, you know, and I think if you use it like that and see it like that and understand that it's not a permanent situation, then um, you can start to work on a strategy to get out. And if you watch no, uh, I mean, if you if watch Inspirational Nomads uh, videos, you know he pretty much covers everything. You know, since he moved in and, and been living in his vehicle and stuff, it's very inspiring. You know, so make sure you look him up, Inspirational Nomad. I will um, post a link once this video gets updated and processed by YouTube. But definitely a channel with following and a person with following because now he's got a house. We're gonna see how he does with it, what he does and um, what happens next. I do have some concerns. I, you know, I'm so excited for him, but I do have some concerns because um, it's gonna be kind of expensive, but I'm assuming, you know, because he's a smart guy that he, he has it all planned out you know, financially, how he's gonna handle paying it and, and everything else. But it is kind of nerve wracking when um, you, you have a place that you live at that's kind of yours, but you still owe money on it. You know, or you have to keep making payments because, uh, you know, as soon as you can't make the payments, you're in a bad position. But there are some bonuses too, having a house, having a, a stable environment. Because having a stable environment, you could probably, if you needed to, or if you wanted to, make more money. I know a lot of people um, living in a vehicle you know, have questions about making money. It's difficult, you know, living in a van is difficult to make money. Unless you're already established, like you have some um, artists and stuff, cartoon artists or writers and stuff, they live in an RV or whatever, and they're already established, so they make money already. But for most people, if they're used to a regular type job, when you switch over to a vehicle dwelling, it's hard because you don't have like a regular address, um, and even like facilities for showering and whatnot, it hurts your your ability to potentially earn income in a traditional way. When I say traditional, I mean like a, a regular job where you're working, working for somebody. And I know some people easily say, well, you know, you can get into starting your own business, you can do, 
yeah, you can do all that, but it's extremely difficult. And being in a vehicle, you know, where you have limited um, resources like internet access, uh, power, just even heat and cold, you know, the, when it gets too hot, too cold outside, you have to deal with that element. And living in a vehicle is harder than uh, being in a, a regular house. So I'm very happy Inspiration Little Man got himself into a more stable situation because now we get really to see him blossom because, you know, he's a very intelligent guy and um, had his plan and, and apparently it's come to fruition, at least for the first part of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited and happy. And uh, we recommend people follow him and, and watch his videos and learn, you know. Um, as for me, you know, my, my situation is a little bit different, you know. Um, I did get a house, you know, but this wasn't my goal. <laughs> My goal wasn't to get back at that house, but I ended up getting it because of circumstance, just like I ended up in the van because of circumstance. You know, I got the house for me for pretty much probably the same reason he did, you know, which is stability and a little bit of security in the sense that, you know, um, you're not on the street where where it's a bit harsher, a little bit harder life when you're in a vehicle. You know, you have your stability. Uh, people aren't gonna come knocking on your door telling you you gotta move <laughs> your window. We're trying to ticket you or tow your vehicle away. You don't have to worry about your house breaking down and you're, you're stuck on the road and they're gonna get, you know, they're gonna tow it and destroy it or whatever, or impound it. So you have a house. And with a house, you have an address. With an address, you have a lot more stable situation for uh, getting a job, insurance, even starting up a business, you know. And of course, um, you have equity, you know, we should start to build it up. Now, in his situation, I think he, he probably had to borrow money from a bank, you know. So, that would make it a little, me a little bit nervous because, you know, I my house that I had was like one or two years from being paid off. And then because of unforeseen circumstances, in, in my case, uh, divorce, you know, and everything else that happened afterwards, I lost everything. But um, his situation is a little bit different. You know, he's a single guy. Um, and uh, when you're single, you know, especially if you've gone through situations that have screwed you over in your life, you tend to know what to avoid. You know, some, some things in life you, you, you experience and you go, man, had I known better, you know. And that's why I recommend people follow like uh, channels like his because he, he kind of covers, you know, what happens in the end of his from, from his own life experiences and things that have happened. So for those of you who are stuck in a vehicle, you know, living in a vehicle, not because you want to, but because of the um, situation, you know, um, Remember, it's only temporary, especially if you want it to only be temporary. You know, it's a chance for you to not be on the street. You're, you're like above the people who are homeless on the street because you still have a vehicle. Hopefully it runs well, because if it doesn't run well, you're really close to being on the street. Because as soon as a van breaks down and that's your home, you know, it could end up being told and um, impounded or whatever by the local city of police or whatever. And uh, that puts you in a bad position. So, you know, if, if you're in that situation, you want to plan your exit. You want to plan... You want to plan how you're going to get out of that. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, if, if you still have credit, if you have uh, income, you know, like a job or, or can show that you have income, um, it's easier to borrow money, you know, to, to get into a place. And people keep talking about the housing bubble and stuff right now. Um, and, you know, they think that it's going to collapse and stuff. I don't think so this time. Because it could collapse in the sense that nobody's around to pay for it, you know. But... Honestly, what I see happening now, and I see people taking advantage of it, like even in um, my area on the east coast of Central Florida, it's really bad. There's a housing explosion over here in the sense of companies buying them up. So the prices have gone ridiculously crazy. 
So the earlier you can get in a house right now, especially in this area, I guess it depends on your market, your area, but in Florida, the earlier you can get in your house, the better, because the price is only going up higher and higher. It's catching up with the rest of the, the nation, the more affluent areas. Like for example, a house around here that a few years ago, you could have bought for like 70000 to $90,000. Um, now it's like two seventy-five to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We're talking the span of like five, six years. It's gone up that high. And what's causing this is like greed, corporate greed. I was just reading in my area here. They had a whole brand new housing development that they built, and it was at Goldman Sachs. I think Goldman Sachs bought the whole community. Yeah, they bought every single brand new housing unit. And they're going to be renting it out. So they're trying to keep people from owning homes. And then um, my house, the, the crappy house that I'm still working on, you know, the mobile home, I just received notice from somebody wanting to buy it off me. Like way more. Up. <laughs> like four or five, six times more than what I paid for it. They don't even want to see it. They just want to buy it. And, you know, it's tempting, but I'm like, you know what? If I sold it, I could become homeless because I don't think I could afford another house around here. They're all gone up so high. That's why they want to buy it. They want to buy it, and then they can either um, restore it and, you know, re-rent it, rent it. They don't want to sell it. The, the new investors, they're not buying houses to resell. They're buying houses to rent because it turns out it's more profitable to rent a property when you can jack up the rental prices <laughs> like crazy like exponentially so all these companies are buying up homes in my area which is um central florida east coast but i think it's happening throughout the whole state of florida right now and houses are starting to go sky high housing prices so the companies are competing and jacking up the prices of homes that used to be ninety thousand dollars to you know two hundred three hundred thousand dollars now which if you're in california and other places a two hundred three hundred four hundred thousand dollar home is probably a bargain but you know in florida that's low i mean that's very high because the the salaries here are low I was reading um, an article because they were talking about housing prices and how we're going to start having more homeless people in um, my county, which is, you know, Brevard, Central Florida, um, on the East Coast. They said that the average, and I was surprised it was as high as it was, because I guess wages have gone up in this area since, um, you know, COVID and stuff. But they said the average a person would need to earn get a um, you know like a one bedroom place to stay or whatever one bedroom place to stay they, they would need to make about 20 I think it's like twenty dollars and fifty seven cents or something per hour you have to earn at least twenty dollars one dollars per hour in this county to get a place to stay but the average earnings here was eighteen dollars and fifty cents or something like that so already a single person couldn't even stay in a place, can't afford housing. And I don't think that's to buy it. I think that's to rent. So, and, and I'm telling you right now, they say average. Well, the jobs I've been seeing posted around here that people are posting with COVID and stuff, trying to attract people, they've raised their rate, wages to like $12, 10 or $12 an hour. Yeah. So when they say average, they're averaging in, and, and this area here has a bunch of engineers. Remember, we do spaceships here. So the average that they're averaging in, right, uh, the, they're engineers, rocket people. <laughs> 70 bucks an hour or more with people who make 10 bucks an hour to get their average. But, you know, the... The, the people who make on the lower end, it becomes more and more difficult because, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the lower end, obviously, working as a janitor. When the price of gasoline doubles, you know, right now it's more than double what it was just a, a 
six months ago, it's more than doubled. That's a 200% increase. But my salary didn't go up like 200%. People say, well, they're saying the inflation index in this area now is something like 7 or 9% or something. But they're averaging everything. But see, the problem is everyone doesn't spend the money on everything. They spend the money on two items mostly. Food. Well, three things. Food, housing, and gas. And those items are not... 15 or, or 7 or, or whatever percent, low percent that they're saying it is. Those items are like 200 to 300 percent. Uh, food hasn't gone up 200 percent, but it's gone up like probably about 30 to 70 percent. You know? Making it really hard to even stay alive. Because one, you need food to eat. You have to eat. Two, you need a place to live. You have to have a place to live. That's why I recommend if, if you're losing your money right now, consider a plan real quick. Possibly considering moving into a vehicle. I know it sucks, but you still have your resources and you might only have to move into a vehicle for you know three months or six months versus you have to stay in a vehicle because you lost your home, you lost your job, you lost your resources and you're screwed. You're homeless. You gotta, you gotta look ahead because it, it, it's happening. I've been warning about it, you know, since um, probably about five years ago when I went out to California and, you know, saw what was happening there. I was like, oh, this is not good. And then I went back to California a couple of years ago and it was even worse. But by the time, the first time I went back, you know, it, it, there were homeless people around Hollywood Boulevard just off, you know, away from the tourist spot. And I was like, this is not good. They're literally living in tents on the sidewalk. And I went to Venice Beach, and, you know, I didn't really have homeless people there yet. But the second time I went, there were homeless encampments, and you could barely walk around. They were on the sidewalks, you know, Muscle Beach and all that. Had homeless people sitting out there in their tents. It was bad. And I don't know, I haven't been there since, but I suspect it's worse. Now, in, in my local area, some cities are trying to come up with... And I think it's kind of wrong, their strategy. They wanted to create a fund, okay? They want to raise some kind of fund to keep people from going homeless, to help with homeless payments, you know, as far as helping them get affordable housing and stuff. The problem is, not that, the, the investors are jacking the, the prices. So you're rewarding the people for jacking up the prices. You're letting them buy up houses that were meant to be affordable. Like, the, you know, you get affordable housing, and they buy it up and it's not affordable anymore. They jacked up the price because they can jack up the price of the housing to the point where people can't buy them and then they rent. You're forced to rent. So those funds that they're trying to get, they're like talking about, you know, getting more taxes or whatever. I'm like, this is the wrong way, dudes. You guys aren't helping. You're making it worse. What you need to do is designate low-cost income housing that cannot be sold, you know, to those corporations buying them up and, and renting them out. Or maybe they can't be rented. You have to cap them, you know. I don't know. You can't allow people to buy up low-cost housing and jack up all the prices. Because then nobody can afford it. Well, nobody that's local. And then you're forcing these people to, to work to pay rent. And then they can't even make the rent, then you put them on the street because you don't give it a, Yeah, I can't even get into it. It's it's sickening, you know? So if you can afford it, get a house. If if you if you're not if you don't have to live in a high expense area, like Florida has now become high expense area, get out. Get land in a home somewhere where it's affordable. But if you're stuck here, I don't know what to say other than um, if you're paying two thousand a month for rent in a year, you could save uh, twenty four thousand dollars. Okay, that means if you can live in a vehicle for a year, but you know you're not gonna save the full twenty four. You might save like eighteen or twenty if you're if you're frugal. You could probably live in a van or a vehicle for four to five thousand a year. You know that's good gas and everything else you would need. But um, if you were doing that, you could save that much money. 
you know, in two or three years, you could have like fifty, seventy, hundred thousand dollars. That's enough to buy land in a home somewhere, not just a cheap place, but some place decent. Anyhow, um, want to congratulate uh, Inspirational Nomad. One hope wanted to steer you to his channel because he's living the dream. <laughs> you should see him on the beach. He looks good on the beach. <laughs> okay. He's a little nervous about the situation. I don't blame him. And I pray that everything works out, you know, for him. But um, I think he's going to become even more productive because he's a smart guy. He knows how to make a plan. He knows how to bring it to fruition. And a lot has to do with um, having dedication and believing in yourself and continuing to press forward. So until next time, everyone, I hope you press forward, have your own goals, and work towards it. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye now.